Hey everybody, thank you for sticking around for our virtual conversation following season two of Sort Of. Oh my God. So I'm so excited to introduce our co-creators, our executive producers, Fab, Filippo, and Bilal Bey. Um, the star, Bilal, we're so happy to see you. Everybody's so excited to see you. Um, say hello to your peoples. Hey, people, what's up? <laughs> um, I uh, want to just get this kick started. Um, this second season was just so moving for me. I know that so many people were feeling it. I felt a full range of emotions. And also as a creative, I was like, this is just gorgeous, stellar writing. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of even just this conversation. So with that being said, um, I want to know when y'all got the green light for season two, what what was going through your mind? What were you all like? Oh yeah, this is like what we're ready to explore now, or or or, or just tell us the whole process around that. Um, I I'll, I can start by sharing that, uh, and I've said this before. I was I felt so grateful that we actually got to start dreaming of what a second season could be before the first one even dropped anywhere like Canada or or the states or elsewhere in the world and I don't know for me that I, it helped with the whole pressure thing of it all like that it, it felt so much about Fab and I kind of you know being curious about yeah wh what's next for these characters and following our own hearts and and guts and then collaborating with our writers, of course, on, on that too. Um, and I, I don't know, I just, I, I think about the sequence of the, in that, in the last episode of the first season where Sebi, you know, professes to Bessie how they feel about her and what she means to them in the hospital and then telling their mom that they won't go away from her if she doesn't go away from them. And then this phone call with Paul about all, like, about, you know, reestablishing what this, dynamic can be between the two of them. And those are big things for somebody like Sebi, I think. And so it made sense that, you know, if they've gotten to this point by the end of the first season, that they're they're sinking in a bit deeper into themselves. And and and, and we talk about love, like how how exciting could that then be that they're they're in a place right now in their life at the start of the second season where there's where they're seriously open to to pursuing love, inviting love, and a, and a specific kind of love too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Fab, do you want to add anything to this? Uh, Bilal said it pretty well. I mean, I feel like, you know, one of the things I'd love to say about our process is that we, we spend a lot of time asking each other questions and our writers questions. And uh, after the first season, when, we were we had this sort of development period where in case we got a season two green light that we could go forward that you know we just came in and sort of asked each other all these things about ourselves and each other and shared things and um it, it's one of my favorite parts of the process because you get to sort of engage with people on this level that you don't really always do in real life like you know you have friends who are like how often do you get to sit down with your friends and like interview them or ask them questions about like how they're feeling about things and uh yeah so that, that's all i want to add that sounds so beautiful like i'm i'm just gushing over this because it feels like whatever i was seeing on the screen was definitely reflected in the whole creative process and so that's just really gorgeous. Um, I think about like also like what you were saying, Bilal, like y'all went deep in with Subby's storyline, like out the gate. And and I was like, oh my God, these are the conversations we need to all be having and how we need to see these characters develop, especially because pandemic and stuff like that and queer people are contending deeply with um, things like, I don't know, I, I feel maybe this is just in my circle of friends, but like, what I call the utility factor, which is like queer people um, having to like, like so so often we haven't had people show up for us. So we show up in big ways, but then that also doesn't allow us to have boundaries. And Bilal in, in um, I'm sorry, Subby in this is um, what I'm seeing is that 
Sabi's character is really like getting like these deep lessons around like boundaries and what they can handle and what they can take. And I was just wondering, like, was this something that was happening in the creative process as well? Like people talking about like energy and like what what people can handle and how what's the equation that we can all come up beautifully and grow together without like taxing ourselves as queer and trans people? Yeah, I mean, I know we for sure, we talk about like care, you know, in so many ways, but you know, part of Sebi's, they're a nanny, like that 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 kind of uh, profession demands, uh, you know, things uh, of you that, uh, yeah, I, I, and, and, and on top of Sebi also, I imagine was somebody who kind of, uh, you know, fixed problems or dealt with things so that they, they didn't have to kind of be at the center of anything. Like before a, a major fire happens, they could kind of take care of it so that there's not more attention already put on them. And um, yeah, I think I think it's a, we, we work with like uh, lots of different queer writers too across both the seasons. And uh, that probably, I, I, I imagine it's something that is so um, intuitively felt too, because yeah, it's a real thing. My my, my friends talk about it too. I, I come from a bit of a nonprofit world too. And that's like, talk about being overextended with really limited resources. And anyways, now I don't know what I'm saying, but. No, I love it all because I think that something else that the show does is really like hone in on the fact that we're nothing without each other. And so that's like just a constant gorgeous theme that just keeps coming up. And and I, I really enjoy that. Um, moving on, I wanted to ask you about these um, new characters and like, you know, like what was exciting about, I, I feel like Sabi gets like, like what I appreciate so much is that there's a wide array of like attraction and romance and I'm not just saying that like to, to talk about like who these potential lovers for Sabi are, but but like there's just so many characters up that provide deep intimacy with the character, with Sabi. And so I wanted to know like how, more about these new characters and uh, maybe like decisions in telling particular storylines. I don't have anything off the bat. But um, but if there's anything that you wanted to share about that, uh, is this uh, is this for me and Fab or both you? of you? I think that maybe I can be a little bit more specific. But like when I think of like, of course, there's Gaia's character, and then we're watching Seven really like you know contend with with that that monstrosity of a pain in the ass. And then, but but like um there's there's fun characters, there's um there's um who who can I bring in? There's Izzy, there's there's so many, so many beautiful characters that are brought in that are showing different sides of all the people and like are showing gorgeous intimacy that isn't just like what you would say is just purely romantic. There's like a mix bag yeah i mean that was for sure i remember fab and i and, and the writers talking about all the kinds of love like that was really intentional when we were looking at love and particularly on our show i don't i felt like it was never going to be a thing where it would only be about romantic love given how you know with with a show like this there's we've been exploring these ideas about like queerness in all the relationships and that word not meaning something really kind of expansive and and applying it to all all our characters and their dynamics and so yeah I, I i mean i was really excited that we could talk about love and in in relationship with multiple genders and family structures and friend love too like i think where sebi and seven get to go this season is yes. is special too yeah, I really love that relationship. I, I mean, I already loved that relationship in the first season because it was like so fun and like there were like hard moments that you could tell like we're gonna know more about, but like here is just like, uh, like at certain moments I thought, will Seven get Subby's back? And there was, and it was shown there in such beautiful ways that I was like, oh, I love this relationship even more. So um, Fab, do you have anything to share about that? Yeah, I mean, 
I'm going to sort of expand a little bit on what Bilal was talking about, you know, what, what sort of was thrilling for me was conversations that we, we all had around queerness and how expansive it got uh, in our conversations that it, it began to sort of include not just gender and sexuality, but also just any kind of relationship and connection that was outside of a norm, outside of a box, so that we even we even defined Seven's friendship with Violet as, as queer because it was like somebody who's in their 20s with somebody who's a teenager, but they're kind of each other's peers, you know, like, and so, so that's kind of what we kept looking for, which was like the queerness of all of our relationships that we have and in our lives. And, you know, and I feel like we all have them, you know, the ones that just don't, you know, is this approach, is it the right, is this fit into a box? Like, mean, what is this person to me? Like, who are, you know, and, and um, that's kind of what we were trying to explore for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I felt it on all the levels. I loved I loved how Seven's relationship with Violet was married with Gaia's relationship with Seven's peoples and like you know the complicatedness. Can we say that? You know what I'm talking about um, about about those kinds of relationships, but also in queerness, it's like um, our our you know because we're chosen family, we're we're having deep intimate relationships with people of different generations. So I, I loved I loved that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about family and maybe I am like like bogarting this conversation because of the things that I'm interested in. But um, as a queer South Asian trans person who is of Tamil Sri Lankan descent, I'm only saying that because Toronto, um, I feel like when there were two moments where I was like, oh, these motherfuckers. Um, when Raffo is, um, there's a scene when um, Sabi and uh, Wolf drop Raffo off. And just that tenderness there, there was, it was just such deep understanding that I understood, like I understood on a whole nother level um, as a trans South Asian person. And then there was the the moment in the car with the father that um, that deaded me. Like I was I was gone after that. Like I had to like just pause and just be like, oh, let me just feel this, right? Um, how are how? Okay, I don't want to necessarily talk about the father, but like when it comes to the mother character and the sister character, um, what? are the um, sort of, I, I feel like queer people, we add to our cis and straight people's lives, but in ways that they don't know. And so in a certain sort of way, when you're saying this thing about queering fab, we're watching the mother and hopefully the sister um, queer as well. But like, how, how were you writing and exploring the mother and sister characters in support of Sabi and vice versa. Like, and, and what was the intentions behind that? Because we could have a family that was just like, you know, fuck y'all, but we have this family that's kind of just willing to go there, you know? And, it, and, and with these identifiers as being South Asian, immigrant, Muslim, et cetera, et cetera, that don't typically have room for that when we when we've heard stories of the past. Yeah, Dilo, I mean, I think there's it's um it's interesting because what I also love about the dynamic, particularly between Rafa and Sabi and Aksa, is that they're also all, you know, fallible too and are learning along the way. Like I think about, you know, Rafa. It's the, the arrival of the father kind of sends all three of them into some certain, you know, they have to fit into that version of the family that Imran kind of knew or wanted. And and I I I also like appreciate the moments where 
you know, there's a sequence where the father misgenders Sebi and, and Sebi and Ruffo just have like a look that they kind of share with each other, but nothing is kind of said more than that. And and I, I think, and, and, and when we talk about Aksa, like I, I was so excited to embrace a character who is, who, you know, to have a trans sibling is, we what we need that that voice that 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 cis perspective that's grappling with it and, and not necessarily again in this in a super violent or aggressive way but what does it what does it mean to be a, a south asian woman in a pakistani muslim family and never be kind of seen as somebody um who's who's um valuable in some ways or or you know she gets sidelined kind of all the time and and that that real stuff i i i think is also all different forms of love as well like they're they're trying you know everyone's trying and and to various degrees of success yes absolutely Absolutely. Um, okay, so final question, because we don't have that much time left. Um, in this final uh, episode, we have the last rites for um, Sebi's father. And it, it's such a beautiful, um, hard, like, wait, what's going to happen? How's this all going to come together? Um, I know that for me, just watching your body, Sebi's character, just standing there and just being like, you could feel all the overwhelming stuff that was that that this was bringing for them. Um, what was that all about? I would love to hear from you, Fab, as the director for this episode as well. Like, um, can you just share as much as possible in these next couple minutes about that? Do you want to go first? Or yeah, I'll, I guess I'll go first. Uh, um, you know. Um, it's, it's a beautiful episode, you know, um, it, it, I kind of feel like a lot of the show when I'm directing is kind of serving and honoring kind of uh, the thing in between Bilal and I, like the experience that we have together as creators when we were doing that, especially there's a lot of me asking Bilal questions and checking, you know, what I love about, you know, how Muslimness is represented in the show is it's just, we're not making a comment about, you know, our specific opinion about religion. We're asking questions, you know? We, we present, for instance, you know, just seven explaining to the kids, hey, when you go to one of these things, just so you know, this is where the men sit, this is where the women sit. And then right after that, we cut to Olympia. And that to me is like this beautiful, like, th you know, like three cuts right there. Cause it's saying everything, it's showing our world, but it's making you ask like millions of questions about, you know, what we accept, you know? And, um, and that's the way our show does it, you know, softly and presenting the questions and letting you kind of make your decisions about what you're seeing. Yes. Bilal? Um yeah, I I um I I love that sequence too a lot and the music, oh my god, like so epic and I don't know, part of me is just flashing to actually filming uh th those sequences and it was I think the first time across both seasons where so much of our cast was in one um, space together. And I kind of often talk about having the pri privilege of working with so many of these wonderful actors one-on-one -on -one, and they often don't get to kind of cro cross worlds all the time. And, and just the, the, I think the, the, the these, those scenes feel it, it's, they're, they're sometimes difficult to watch for sure, but there was a lot of love that was put in when it was being made and, and off camera, we were, having a pretty great time like again the mix of the worlds like the kids were there and so many south asian folks too and then the sevens and the olympias of the world too and anyways yeah i am um, i i really I, I thought it was really you know we 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 introduced the character of the imam as well earlier in this season and and to talk about you know um 
love in the, in that in, love and faith or a kind of spiritualness to like um it's just awesome that we're able to include all of that in, in this season and that and for sebi that yes it's not about um hating where you're from or what you know the 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 religious systems that have been put on you but it's yeah it's about how do we how do we exist in these moments and um yeah even though even though it it it's quite you know the the sequence is makes me feel sad i i i love it because it there was so much love and and so grateful that that something like that can be made with so much tenderness and compassion and care mhm mm well we felt it i surely did like i i thought that was like one of the most important scenes that i had seen in so long like something that just rocked me to my core like just watching you was just like who um well with that oh i also want to take a, a moment to tell you that yes the music in that scene brought it mm. absolutely kudos to both of you uh the soundtrack in both seasons is just bang i just want to say that like as a music lover as a deep deep music lover like the music is just fire all the way through so thank you for for t i know that that's like working with a team of folks and bringing and and music coordinators and whatever but like the music just really gives it its own feel and i love that all right everybody we are at the end of it thank you so much for joining us i want to say thank you to Bilal Vague and Fab Filippo Filippo is it Filippo Filippo, let me say that again. Let's do that again. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in and um, hearing these fabulous creatives, uh, Bilal Beg and Fab Filippo. And we will see you all soon.